Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Hey, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Doing all right. Sunday night. Uh, haven't turned the noise gate back on yet, so I'm going to do this real quick. We're going to... All right, we're going to do that real quick. So did it come through? I didn't hear that one. Nope. Ah, uh, man. I hope it comes through on the recording. We'll see. It either <laughs> does or it doesn't. I opened up a beer for anyone who wasn't either you're listening to the audio version of this or you, you weren't paying attention. Uh, who cooks for you? That is a who cooks for you uh, by Jack Yes. Um, nice. All right, Kyle, we have Jared drinks wine coolers. Um, I don't know if I've ever drink drank a wine cooler. I don't know that I know what a wine cooler is. To be honest with you. All right, Kyle. No, no, no time for goofs. No time for gaffes. We have uh, it, Kyle. Full transparency time. We weren't going to do this episode tonight. We 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 had planned out doing a too early depth chart prediction show. That that was the plan for today. We we were gonna we were gonna. It seems like every July, or excuse me, January, some other J name. We do a, we do a too early depth chart proje projection show. Best guessing the depth chart, something like that. And that's what that's what was going to happen today. But man, the 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 hits keep on coming for Ohio State. The hits keep on coming for Ohio State, Kyle. Another huge week in Ohio State athletics. Ohio State uh, has gotten busy in the portal. Ohio State has now signed. They sure have. At the, at the time of recording and new people jump in the portal. And so these numbers have a tendency to change. But as of recording, Ohio State has signed the number one, number four, number seven, and number 16, 16th player, number 16 player uh, out of the portal. That's, that's pretty good, right? Kyle, I was told NIL at Ohio State doesn't work. Thoughts? I was told NIL yeah. at Ohio State's broken. Thoughts? You one of two things. Sometimes, sometimes, I guess sometimes you have to be patient. One of two things. <laughs> Either one, uh, losing to Michigan three years in a row and watching them win the national title uh, has, has convinced the boosters that it's time to actually seriously commit to NIL, that it is important and that they need to, they need to get involved or two, mm -hmm. uh, 1870 is just a lot better at this than the foundation was. One of those two things is probably true. Why not both spikes? I agree. Working so well, it's got a certain SEC coach crying. I mean, that's not hard. They're, they're, Kirby Smart's just mad that everyone gets to pay players now. <laughs> Used to be they could just do it. Although it didn't work for Texas A&M, so I don't know what to tell you. Oh, was it Lane? Eh. Well, is it, is it because we stole his best running back and uh, this year and his best cornerback last year? Is that why? Probably. They taking over from Gene in terms of steering the collectives? Maybe. Welcome, Kabuto. Uh, I mean, further big news from Ohio State this week. And of course, this doesn't technically take effect until July. Uh, Gene's still in charge over, over in Ohio State land. Uh, but Ohio State has announced a new athletic director who will be taking over in July. He comes from Texas A&M, uh, a... A, an institution that's not afraid of sh uh, handing out NIL money. Um, you're not going to get any like athletic director hot takes from Kyle and I. A lot of people have had a lot of hot takes, but it's like an administrative role at the university. And I, I'm not going to pretend like I know because I don't know. I don't I don't even know what an athletic director does most of the day, most of the time. No, uh, they they collect a paycheck. Well, and they, they they should be collecting other people's paychecks too, in forms you know fundraising and whatnot. Um, it just like a lot of people have a lot of hard 
uh, a lot of hard opinions on the athletic director. It's an administrative position at a university. I don't have a hard. I don't care. I, I, I'm not saying it doesn't matter because it can matter. I'm not saying. I'm just saying I don't have an opinion. And then we can, we have other things to talk about. Cal, that's only item number two. Item number three. And don't worry, we will be going over these things in more detail. Ryan Day gets his guy for the offensive coordinator position. Yeah, man, there, definitely. Uh, there, there's definitely there's definitely a lot of mixed. You, you, there's you, you got a lot of fans who are kind of mixed about this here. Uh, you, you got some that wanted more of a maybe more of a young gun type of um, offensive coordinator or someone who's more innovative. But there's other people like I think Jared and I are on the same boat here. I I like it. It it checks yeah. all the boxes. It checks all the boxes that Ryan Day wanted. He wanted an NFL guy. Well, Kyle, he wanted Kyle, someone. Slow, so slow your roll, buddy. I got one more thing to introduce. You're jumping into the show. I got one more thing in the intro. Also, <laughs> Ohio State. Uh, we'll, we'll get we'll get right into Bill O'Brien here in a second, Kyle. I can tell you're itching. <laughs> one more thing in the intro that we'll be talking about. And we're not going to talk a ton about it, but Ohio State finishes, I presume, finishes their 2024 recruiting class. Okay, Kyle, Bill O'Brien, go. All right. Uh, yes, Bill O'Brien. Uh, as Jared said, uh, they got got his, his offensive coordinator here. Uh, checks all the boxes that Ryan Day wanted. NFL guy, uh, years of experience, both college and professional. Someone who's um, experienced, uh, capable of running the offense as well as Jared and I have said um, the past few weeks here. Don't need someone to redesign to um, come up with a brand new offensive scheme. Like it's it's already said, this Ferrari is ready to roll. You just need to hand the keys to someone who can actually operate it. And I think I think Bill O'Brien a, is a great candidate for that here. Yeah, as Kyle said, there was a rumored Ryan Day wish list. He wanted a guy with NFL experience. Check. Wanted someone who had coached at both levels. Check. Wanted someone who had been an offensive coordinator at both levels. Check. Wanted an experienced play caller. Check. Wanted someone who was capable of being, quote, the head coach of the offense. Check. Bill O'Brien's been a head coach for a total of nine, well, eight and a half. He didn't finish the 2020 season with the Texans. Eight and a half seasons, six and a half in the NFL with the Texans, two at Penn State. And we're in a room of, and of course, we don't really, allegedly Bill O'Brien's going to get the opportunity to retain or not retain. Um, whoever he wants assistant to the head coach of the offense. Yeah, exactly. Kabuto. Uh, someone Ryan will allow to run the offense and let him CEO to a certain extent. I think when we talk about running the offense. I think there's a difference between running the offense on Saturday and running the offense like Monday to Friday. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think at the end of the day, this will still be Ryan Day's offense. But we'll get on that in a second. I, like Kyle was saying, I think a lot of the frustration from people was coming. A lot of people were in us. We included a lot of these guys just last week. We ran down a huge list of different options. And sometimes Kyle and I'd be like, well, he's like, you know, th here's this guy. He's only been offensive coordinator for a couple years. He's like 36, you know. What you're getting with Bill O'Brien, someone in his uh, mid 50s, I believe. Someone who's like a no nonsense, hard edged dude. Uh, Ryan Day has said the word toughness so many times over the past 12 months that the word has practically lost meaning. But if you're looking for someone to bring a bit of toughness to the offense, Bill O'Brien's that guy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bill O'Brien is. Absolutely. In, he galvanized PSU. He sure did. Um, 
So when you're looking at what Ryan Day was trying to accomplish here, this is not we went searching for Jim Knowles during the, the Jim Knowles process of finding and hiring, giving the defense to Jim Knowles. You are looking for someone to come in, reshape and reinvent the defense to build the defense back from the ground up. That's not going to be Bill O'Brien's job. Ohio State, as Kyle said, is in a sports car. It is an absolute sports car. Now, it might need new tires. But it's still a sports well, and, car. And, that, and, and that's where the that's where the uh, <laughs> the whole NIL and um, and the transfer portal came in. The, here, here's, your, uh, here's your new wheels. In my in my, in my analogy, <laughs> in my analogy, the offensive linemen are the tires. Yeah, that's in true. my analogy. Yes. So we haven't we 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 got one of those tires. We still need to get a second one, in my opinion. Um, and then even if you go back and look at like when Urban brought in Kevin Wilson and Ryan Day, right? And Kevin Wilson is the offensive coordinator. Ryan Day is the uh, co-offensive coordinator. And their job when they came in to Ohio State was to modernize Urban Meyer's offense. Take Urban Meyer, this analogy, um, it's not your first or last. No, it's offensive linemen or tires. It doesn't matter how great the sports car is. Doesn't matter how many horsepower you have, how good the driver is. None of that matters if your tires suck. Offensive linemen or tires. The, the analogy is, is perfect. Oh, if you're not first, you're, ah, if you're not first, you're last. Okay, sorry, I I misread that. I see, I see the joke now. My bad. Um. So you know, but I, Urban Meyer brings in Day and Wilson to modernize the Urban Meyer offense. That's not what needs to happen here. Ryan Day needs someone to come in and run the offense on Saturdays. He's not going to totally hand off the offense. This is still going to be Ryan Day's offense. He's going to help game plan it. He's going to help design plays. He's still going to build the philosophy of the offense. The big difference here, however, is that he will still be involved with the offense, but he's not going to be shouldering the entire load of the offense. Bill O'Brien's going to come in and run the offense on Saturdays. He's going to call plays. He's going to do all that stuff. And maybe just as, if not more importantly, Bill O'Brien's job will be to come in and coach the offensive coaches. Ryan Day doesn't need to be managing 11 coaches. Ryan Day should be managing two coaches. Ryan Day should be managing the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator. And those guys handle the other guys. That's how the system should be working. And when Kevin Wilson left, that fell apart. Ryan Day was just in charge of the entire offense. So in charge of managing 100 players, plus a pretty young offensive coaching staff, um, with the exception of Tony Alford, the offensive coaching staff at Ohio State is incredibly young. Mm -hmm. And, you know, needing some direction and needing some, you know. You needed a middle manager essentially. And Bill O'Brien is that plus yep. that plus so much yep, more. Yep. Kyle, let's talk a little bit about uh, Bill O'Brien's experience. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, he's, I mean, wh wh which side do you want to start with the coordinator, Bill O'Brien or the head coach, Bill O'Brien? Uh, you got... start, you go wherever you want to go. <laughs> well, if you're going with the coordinator, I mean, he worked with Bill Belichick. He worked with Nick Saban. Uh, he he worked along with a pair of Heisman winners too. Uh, Bryce Young being one of those there. Like he he, know, he knows how to run a he knows how to run a really good offense here at Bama. His uh, the offense score. Did scored you say a pair 40. of Heisman Trophy winners? Uh, uh, I thought it. I thought it was two two Heisman, wasn't it? I don't think so. Okay. Well, Bryce wrong. Bryce Young for sure. Uh, yes, 48 Bryce points. Young. 
48 points per game is uh was that year that Bryce Young won the Heisman there that's that's moving that's a that's a that's a really uh fine oiled machine just doing its thing there um uh, and then as a as a head coach i mean when when before, joe paul was fired before, 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 before 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 we move on to head coach as a coordinator how many people walking this earth right now can say that they were the offensive coordinator for the two best who's ever done it bill belichick arguably the best head coach in nfl history arguably top five mm -hmm. but definitely the best who was active last year and bill belichick or excuse me and nick saban who's the best college coach ever like those are the guys he was an offensive coordinator for each of them how many people can yeah. say that and now he's the offensive coordinator for ohio state that's huge that is that yeah. alone is huge. And by the way, Bill Belichick rehired him. He had two separate instances as the offensive coordinator for New England. And you know, you know that at, when he got an offensive coordinator for Nick Saban, that Nick Saban called Bill Belichick and said, hey, because th th those two pretty tight. Mm -hmm. You know, he was like, hey, should I hire him? And, Nick, and Bill Belichick was like, yeah, are you stupid? Hire him. <laughs> And then as a as a head coach, though, he was he was there at Penn State uh, when when Joe Paul was uh, was fired and he took over. And really, he was well, was just, just to be of clear, Bill he came in after Joe Paul. He wasn't. OK. He after was after in, he, he was left, the offensive after, coordinator at New England, yeah, yeah, yeah. left and took over for Joe Paul. Yeah, yeah. After after Joe just Paul needs to be super Mikey. clear. He wasn't at Penn State at the time. It is a very important thing to. OK. I mean, he 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 kept Penn State float there. Like if it wasn't for him, Penn State yeah. would have just gone down so bad, so bad. But but yeah, he he kept, he kept Penn State afloat and kept him at least somewhat relevant then too. Eight so. and four, eight and four. Man, if if y'all, it's like nowadays when a head coach leaves, we're seeing it right now with Alabama and Nick Saban. When a head coach leaves, and that's just almost sort of understood now that like there's going to be guys who turn around and leave too. That was not the case back then there. We didn't have the word transfer portal yet. When Joe Paul was fired, it was free reign for Penn State players to transfer. And we had never seen that before. They lost talent, although not uh, honestly, not a ton, but they lost some of their best talent to, to what we would now say the portal. Um, the turmoil around the program was insane. The fact that he walked in there and took that team to eight and four with Matt McGloin as his quarterback is wild. One of the best coaching jobs we've seen ever. Honestly, he won coach of the year in the big 10 that year, which uh, previously would have had Joe Pa's name on that trophy. Uh, no, no longer, but uh yeah, he saved Penn State from a decade or more of total irrelevancy with what he did at Penn State. Mm -hmm. He has an eight and four year. Then he turns around and he recruits five star Christian Hackenberg. Now, I know there's a lot of Ohio State fans who are like, oh, hey, Christian, Hack he, he sucks. We can have that. We can have how good was Christian Hackenberg a conversation on a later day. Yeah. Fact of the matter is, is he was the number one pro style quarterback in his recruiting class. And his most impressive year was the one year he was there with Bill O'Brien. Yes, that's the point. Your your freshman year shouldn't be statistically your best year. But I, Jim, but James Franklin does that to quarterbacks sometimes, I guess. Um. 
He convinced the number one pro style quarterback in the country to come play for Penn State when, and they thought this at the time, it ended up, the, the bull band ended up getting taken off later. But at the time, Convince Christian Hackberg to go to Penn State when they thought they were going to be bowl banned for the next three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you're asking yourself, pro- hey, can he recruit? <laughs> yeah. Woody brought, brings up a good thing kind of going into um, as a head coach of the Houston Texans here. He had a winning, he- he had a winning record as a head coach in the NFL, which is surprisingly hard to do it, it's very it's, hard to do um you don't frequently in the nfl get to take over a winning program so you're always kind of bill o'brien had pre-prime deshaun watson uh he had well he had like he i believe he had every course again he was he, bill o'brien wasn't there for the entire 2020 season but Bill O'Brien coached at least at the beginning of the year, every single Deshaun Watson Houston season. If Deshaun Watson was playing for Houston, it was under Bill O'Brien, at least at the start of the year. He won six. He won four of won the division four out of six years. Yes. And he didn't have Deshaun Watson every year. No, I think just the last four of his seven seasons. I believe again, he didn't finish 2020, but yeah, uh, I actually have this right here. Uh, The Houston Texans have won the AFC South in 2011 and 2012. That that was before Bill O'Brien. Then in 15, 16, 18 and 19 with Bill O'Brien and have only won it once since. Houston Texans, not a very old franchise. They were founded in 2002. They've only won the division seven times. Of those seven times, four of them were with Bill O'Brien. He has he coached what can, I think, inarguably, inarguably be called the Houston Texans only successful era. Now, before you start Ohio state fans, one, one year, one year of the Ryan's slash Stroud era does not constitute an era yet. It's a single season. Just I, what about CJ? Str- yet. Exactly. Yet. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not an era yet. It's not the most successful area yet. So, that 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 era is still being that 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 history is still being written. We're not we're not we're not counting that year yet. We're not counting 2023 yet. But there's only been one era in which the Houston Texans were good, and it was under Bill O'Brien. Until CJ Stroud came in. Oh, we just talked <laughs> about that, Kyle. I know. I just want to emphasize it, Jared. I know, and I just <laughs> thought it would be funny if I got mad at you for no reason. And you laughed, right. so I was right. <laughs> by the way when he was fired in 2020 from the texans i, I think he was he was making some real questionable gm decisions hmm. which listen he won't be the gm at ohio state he won't be the general manager at ohio state that's all i'm saying the ravens prove stroud still can't do pressure that's okay. that's wrong He's as good under pressure as you can expect a rookie in the NFL to be. Literally, no quarterback is better with pressure than without pressure. Every quarterback would rather have a good offensive line in front of him. It makes it tougher. Now, before okay. we go on to before we go into our uh, commercial break here, I'd want to shout out to uh, Kevin Noon here because I, I completely agree with what Kevin Noon says here about Bill O'Brien. Uh, he says the Bill O'Brien hire will be a success if they do away with Quick House. 
<laughs> all right we're, we're gonna cut the commercial real quick on our uh on our podcast feed if you don't want these podcast commercials snuck in here by spreaker uh please uh join our patreon where you can listen uh commercial free okay Kyle. Let's uh I know I'm going out of order on the show no- uh, no, let me just let me let me talk about Dominic Kirk's super quick. All right. We talked uh Ohio State finishes up their 2024 recruiting class, I assume. Uh with Dominic Kirk's uh he is a defensive tackle from Plainsville, Ohio. He has officially committed to Ohio State. He'll sign in February. Um I just talked about Dominic Kirk's last week on the Tuesday episode. We talked about Dominic Kirk's um, in December during the national signing day signed recap special that we did. We we talked about him coming as if it was a foregone conclusion. And he, here, here it is. If you want to hear more thoughts on it, we, we really like Dominic Kirk's really happy. He's a part of the team. Um, I think he I think he has evidence that Ohio State needs to pursue Ohio kids sooner in the process as opposed to later in the process. Um, but anyway, we we have a lot to talk about today and we've talked about Kirk's a lot recently in recent episodes. So we're going to yep, yep. move on to some transfer portal news. Oh, um, let's go. To, let's go down to Tuscaloosa, Jared. Yeah, no, we're going, going to Tuscaloosa, to- Zach, not not Florida, Tuscaloosa. There, there's an Alabama emote in there too. Uh, yeah. We're going to Tuscaloosa, where Ohio State has uh lifted two more. Let's not let's not forget about McLaughlin. Uh, they're all under the state codes. So just put the state postal code when you're searching for a. Uh, for an emote and you'll find it just just do colon and then the state code and then it'll pop up um the we're, all right kyle we're going to tuscaloosa uh yes. high state has stolen two additional two additional players from alabama to go along with seth, seth mclaughlin it broke late friday night that caleb downs was in fact Coming to Ohio State. Caleb, I, yes. and by the way, so, it was all best off season for our program that I can remember, says Woody. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with you. Of course, we haven't really had portal access like this for too long, but mm-hmm. the anyway, Caleb Downs. It was it was sealed and delivered that he was going to Georgia. Georgia brought on the Alabama defensive backs coach to be their defensive coordinator. Um, It was a done deal. It was an absolute done deal that Caleb or (laughs) Caleb Downs uh, was going to, uh, to Georgia. And then it wasn't. And then it wasn't. Um, I'm still shocked we got him. Like, dude, all I don't blame you. All, 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 all of the buzz was sending him to Georgia. I've heard rumors, and I don't know how true these rumors are. I've heard rumors that he was was already like apartment shopping in Athens. I don't know if that's yeah, true I or not. Saw that. I, I saw I, that too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I we probably saw it the same place, but I have no idea if it's true or not. But Ohio State swooped in at the last second and got Caleb Downs. Um, It should be noted, Caleb Downs, his Ohio State came in second during his initial recruitment. Ohio State came in second, and it was specifically stated to reporters why Ohio State lost to Bama. It was down to two, and he chose Alabama. And the reason was made public, I believe, by maybe Downs' dad, if I'm remembering correctly. But someone said to the the someone in Ohio State media, I don't remember that part either. Like, Ohio State's defense hadn't looked very good. 
and he wanted to go play for a defense that looked good. And then we saw what Ohio State's defense looked like this year. We saw what Ohio State's defense looked like this year. So guess what? The one concern he had with Ohio State is no longer there. And that in a bag of money, because that's how college football works nowadays, yep. that in a bag of money brought him to Columbus. How good, Kyle, how good is Caleb Downs? For anyone uh, out there who maybe doesn't know, he's, maybe maybe needs convincing, he's how good is Caleb good. Downs? He's very good. As a true freshman, true freshman, he had over 100 tackles as a defensive back as well. Over 100 tackles, 70 of those solo, so he can tackle in space. Yeah. Two interceptions also has a force in the recover fumble as well, too. And Kyle, can I tell you? Can I, tell you I, I, how I, didn't, good? I didn't realize this until you put can this in you? the in the in the notes here, but that, that 107 tackles he had led Alabama's defense. Kyle, it didn't just lead Alabama's defense. The next closest guy had 67 tackles. He bested the second place tackler at Alabama by 40 tackles. Kyle, he had enough solo tackles that if only his solo tackles counted, he would have led Alabama with tackles. Yeah, he had more solo tackles than anyone else on the Alabama defense had total tackles. The most important, the most important stat in this here, Jared, and I want I want to make sure everyone's listening here. The most right, important everyone, everyone focus stat. up. Everyone focus up. Kyle's got a good stat. The, the most important stat here from Caleb Downs is that he had a punt return touchdown. <laughs> I should have he seen had a that punt coming. return touchdown. I should have seen that That's coming. Why didn't I see that coming? What matters here? He won the SEC. It's happening. It's happening, folks. It is happening. Twenty twenty four. It is happening. It is happening in a nine-year drought at this point. <laughs> Parker Fleming is actually why Downs didn't come originally, <laughs> says Buckeye Esquire. Oh, that's 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 dirty, Esquire. That's dirty. Also, maybe true, but dirty. Uh, won the SEC Freshman of the Year Award. He was second All-American, not freshman All-American. Second team All-American according to the Associated Press. And was first team all SEC, not freshman SEC. First team all SEC. He's pretty good, right? <laughs> he's pretty good. Pretty good. And by the way, did I mention he's a true freshman? Ohio State's going to get him for two seasons. Yeah. Yes, two seasons. <laughs> Unless he pull, pulls out oh, a... Oh, God. Oh, no, no, no. It's two seasons. Two seasons. No. Yes, I... yes. No, no. We're in Marv territory. It doesn't matter how big the NIL guys show yeah, yeah. up. It doesn't It doesn't matter. He's nope, in, like, no, Marv the... top five we'll, we'll, territory. We'll, we'll, By the we'll way, Kyle, in... according to recruiting rankings, mm -hmm. on three, number one safety in the country. 24-7 24, 24 sports, number one safety in the country. ESPN, number one safety in the country. Rivals, number one safety in the country. And every single service that matters, because ESPN's recruiting rankings suck, had him as a top 10 overall player in the country. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we'll, we'll cover this in uh, next week's episode, though, with Caleb Downs coming to Ohio State here. Where does he fit in this defense? And... Where will some of the existing defensive players shuffle to? No, I think we can talk about that right now. Oh, you do. You want to talk about that right now? I, I, I think it's worth talking about. I think it's worth talking about. Um, this solidifies, in my opinion, but, we, you know, we also get ransom back. Like it almost feels like forever since that amazing news broke. We're also getting yeah. ransom back. <laughs> So our two deep safeties are going to be downs and ransom. Ransom's going to play your strong side, you know, 
little more run supporty, although Caleb Downs, as you know, with 107 tackles, is perfectly capable of doing run support. Um, but Ransom's going to be like your up safety, your strong side safety. Um, it, it looks like Downs is going to be your free safety, your your sort of deep field, weak side uh, safety. Um, and, you know, you'll have um, you have Hancock is your nickel back uh, and you'll still have Iggy and Burke on the outside. Kyle five defensive backs is Ohio state ever had better. I, good question. Good question. I mean, Ohio state's had some good years where they've had some really stellar defensive backs. They sure have. I'm I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking that question lightly. I am well aware, Kyle. Let me think about that. I'll get back to you, Jared. <laughs> let me let me All right. let me let me look at the previous years of at Ohio State. I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking some of those yeah, the two thousands, maybe early twenty tens. I, I gotta I gotta I gotta do some more research on that. Okay. I I mean I would the f- the first one that comes to my mind, like the 2019 crew was pretty good. But anyway, I but I don't think they're this good as far as pure talent on the field. I don't think they're this good, although I really like the 2019 crew. I'm talking specifically the secondary, Austin. I'm just talking about the secondary. Um, what this does, uh, notice we don't talk about, oh, uh, oh, then this isn't even debatable on paper on paper. No, it's not. I don't think it's debatable either, but, um, uh, yeah, like Sean Wade was your third corner on that team, which is an, an, an incredible thing to say. But yeah, I, I don't want to spend a ton of time talking about that. Um, now, when we're talking about how this otherwise affects, note that we're talking about the safeties and we didn't talk about Sonny. Didn't talk about Sonny Styles. No, we did it. Sonny Styles is going to be given the opportunity, as Austin is saying in the chat, to be a, a linebacker, if not a like defensive pass rusher. I won't say end, but maybe it may be in a Jack type role. He's big enough. He's big enough to play Jack. It's kind of crazy. He was playing safety last year. Cause outside of defensive tackle and cornerback, that might be the worst place to put him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I could make an argument that he's a much better inside outside yeah. linebacker or defensive end than he would be a safety. He uh, he's the outside linebacker in a three, four scheme. I'm not saying Ohio state's going to be playing a three, four next year, but if you think about the way the Jack is utilized, and if we actually see the Jack really come along in the way we are expecting it to in, in years previous, you are ta- essentially talking about taking a defensive end and standing them up, which is what a three, four is, except if you have a fifth defensive back on the field, then it's more of a three, three at that point. Um, I'm just saying. It might be more beneficial if if we really get into the safety slash linebacker and the, you know, defensive end slash linebacker. And you have the, you know, you get all of these sort of hybrid positions out there. It does start to look a little more like a three, four than a four, three. 
if they fully utilize these hybrid roles, which they haven't fully utilized to this point. It's worth it's worth watching how this affects how Ohio State uses Sonny Styles instead of relying on him to play back and play safety. If you can get him in a role that lets him roam around a little bit more and just sort of be an agent of chaos. It'll be really interesting to see how that's utilized and how mm. effective it can be. Because I, 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 I don't answer. I don't think Sonny Styles belonged that deep, that far away from that far away from the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he, he needs to play further up. He definitely needs and to he, and he up. will be now. That's one of yes. this Caleb Downs being on this team doesn't just make the secondary better. It just made the front seven better. Yeah, I, I think I got my answer, Jared. The best secondary. OK. 2016. 2016 okay. with Malik Hooker, Marshawn Lattimore, Gary and Conley, and Denzel Ward. It's a hard crew. It's a hard crew. Who's the fifth guy? Because we're talking we're talking about fifth guys as well. Um, who was the fifth guy? Um, because if we're going five deep. Arnett, maybe, mm. is what Austin is saying. Arnett, I think Arnett was on that team, Austin, but I don't know if he was like Damian Arnett yet, if that makes sense. He may have just been. Webb. Oh, Webb. Yeah. Damon Webb. No, Damon Webb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it is too early for Sheffield. I'll tell you that. That's 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 a good that's, it is that's a good a, crew. That's a good. I think that's the team to beat for this team. That's the that, I think that's probably the crew to beat for this team. Um, <laughs> just not from twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty one. Yeah, the Ohio State had a weird drought there for defensive backs. Yeah, well twenty. Uh, the, 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 the talent was there in 2022, Austin. I just, yeah, they, they were young. Burke had injury issues all year. Um, Proctor got hurt. Um, I, I just randomly found an article here from first season in the scheme. Yeah. From 11, 11 warriors about three and a half years ago, they said the 2016, and they broke it down statistically based on number of criterias. The number one secondary was the 97 team with um, Winfield, Moore, Gary Berry, and Ahmed Plummer. And then number two was crew, the, 90, the 98 team with Moore, Winfield, Plummer, and Nate Clements. And then Ooh, the 2016 damn, was... Too. And then 2016 was uh, the third. I, yeah, you can Clemens say this team. Was a dog. You can say this yes, team is was. Yeah, Austin said you know this team is better, but then Woody said it was a different game in the '90s. Yeah, like a lot of those Help. safeties that Kyle just named would be linebackers in the modern game. Yeah. It's 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 uh, look, it's difficult look, look to compare team. across. Look at the, look at the 2000. I I take the 2000 team as well. Uh, you have. Clement Mitchell, Derek Ross, and then Mike Doss as well. Clement and Doss back there. Ooh. Yes, sir. Good, but not as good as the other teams we mentioned. Yeah. But there you go. There, there's, there's the, uh, that's the lineup. There, those are what the 2024 team is going up against. All right, Kyle. Ohio State is just gone shopping in Tuscaloosa. Yep. They burglarized Bama. Stole Bill O'Brien. Stealing, stealing the corners and now stealing the corners. quarterbacks. No corners. Or safeties. The, 
Yes, the safety. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, stole Bill O'Brien. Uh, he, he was a year in New England, but whatever. Um, stole their center. Stole their safety. Now, Kyle. Got to steal their quarterback of the future. Julian Sayan. Uh, if you could add one former Buckeye to this team this year, that isn't an offensive tackle. Cause you know, I was about to say Orlando pace. Um, who would it be? Um, <laughs> CJ Stroud. Next. Next. Um, you really should have taken the quarterback away from me too. <laughs> I wouldn't, I'd take Stroud, but that's fine. Um, Julian saying, uh, only a few weeks from committing to Bama decommits from Bama didn't decommit. He's transferring. Transfers from Alabama to Ohio State. Kyle, how good is Julian saying? Well, now it should be stated. He's never even him. practiced with a college team. Yes. Before. I was going to say, he, he is a, he is a true level, freshman who just signed with Bama a month ago. That needs to be said. Now, that being said. Uh, Zach said, look, Charles Bentley. Well, Bentley was inside. He Wasn't he a center? He was an interior guy, right? I'd take Bentley, too. Bentley is also a good answer. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good Nick Mangold. I think there's a lot of good centers I'd take. Oh, yeah, Mangold's a good one, too. Well, I say it has a lot of good centers. Um, I think that would also be an acceptable answer to that question. How good, Kyle, is Julian saying? Well, he won the 23 Elite 11 finals, which went up against um, Rayola and Noland, who were both ranked second and third. Yeah, they're just to be clear, Elite 11 only declares a winner, but, you know, all, all of the recruiting outlets are there and they all do their own rankings. Mm -hmm. Most most people put these. Well, most people put saying at one. But then like that crew of three people sort of above the rest. Uh, most the most common ranking you'd see out of an Elite 11 like post elite, elite you know elite 11 write up article from a recruiting outlet would basically say say in one rayola two and nolan three and it's kind of crazy that all three of those guys um were affiliated with ohio state at one point yeah and two of them <laughs> currently still are kind of crazy yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, this is I mean, how how does Ohio how does Ohio State handle handle the quarterback room now? I mean, it's a good question. Um what he asks, does Nolan stay? Yeah, Nolan's going to stay. Um It's 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 tough. I mean, there, there were rumors out there and these are, there are a lot of conflicting rumors. A lot of times I'll say this, there were rumors out there and a lot of people will think I you will believe the rumor because I may, because I'm repeating it or because they heard it elsewhere. But I really want to emphasize that there were a lot of conflicting rumors out there about how the bringing in of Julian Sand was being received, not just by Nolan, but the 2024 recruiting class. 
you know, you heard everything from open rebellion of the entire recruiting class to everyone's cool with it and basically mm -hmm. everything in between. And, you know, we were having this discussion in the discord and someone said to me, or, you know, they just, maybe not, they just were talking and just like, how do you sell this? How do you sell this to Noland? And this is what I wrote. I, I, I was, I decided I was going to role play as Ryan day for a second. This is what I wrote. When I first got to Ohio State as the quarterbacks coach, I had Dwayne Haskins and Joe Burrow waiting behind JT Barrett. I knew from the start that they were both special talents, but only one of them could win the job. They competed and pushed each other every day. That competition made them the best quarterbacks they could be. Ultimately, Joe hurt his wrist and Dwayne won the job. But both players were Heisman finalists. Both players picked in the first round. This is Ohio State. No one here is promised a starting position. They are earned, not given. What I can promise you is that we will make you the best version of yourself. If you stay here and you put in the work, you'll be great. Austin, we won't talk about the fact that Tate Martell was also in that in that quarterback room. That's that's not we're do, we're sales pitching. We're not telling an accurate history lesson. We're sales pitching. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter about Tate Martell. But that that that's how you sell it. Ohio State is big boy football. If you think you were ever at any point promised a starting position, you were wrong. I'm not saying that Nolan thinks that for the record. This isn't, I don't know. I've heard too many conflicting reports about how Nolan feels about this situation to even presume to know how Nolan feels about the situation. There's, there's, there's too much stuff out there that is conflicting. I have no idea how air truly feels about all of this. No idea. I'm not going to pretend to. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of conflicting reports out there. I'm just doing the sales pitch. How do you convince two of the three best quarterbacks in the recruiting class to live in the same recruiting class? And you, you give them the old iron sharpens iron. That's how. Kyle, we need to we need to cut to another commercial break real quick. Um, again, if you don't want to hear these uh, commercials on the podcast feed, uh, then you can hear the commercial free version on uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Thirty two dollars a year. That's it. Thirty two dollars a year. Here's a quick commercial break. Yeah. <sighs> Austin says, I want air to be our 2025 quarterback, but if Saiyan is better then let's ride, if air knew Saiyan was coming, he wouldn't have committed though. I, but you don't know that you, you can assume that you can presume that, but you don't know that. Like we need to be careful putting motivation and you know, making decisions for players. Well, you know, they definitely would have or wouldn't have done that. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. But if you're Ryan Day, quarterbacks get hurt. Quarterbacks leave because NIL and they miss Texas. Number of reasons. You know, they, they miss Texas too bad or they never really care. They, they just wanted to leave high school and this was the best way to do it or because. Well, I, uh, a dozen reasons quarterbacks just leave. One of them might just leave and then you still have the other one. One of them might get hurt and you still have the other one. And if they both stay healthy, they will push each other to amazing heights. And then one of them can go to LSU and win the national title. Like the whole 
Joe Burrow, Dwayne Haskins sales pitch is, is a sales pitch. I acknowledge I'm putting together, I am being Ryan day in that and, you know, putting together the sales pitch of getting what I want, which is both the quarterbacks to stay. That is what I want, but you know what? It's also true. <laughs> It's also true. Those two pushed each other to amazing heights. And they also did it in an era before NIL and in an era before the transfer portal. And it was, even though it was not very long ago, it was kind of a long time ago. And yes, because I know someone's going to, Joe Burrow wasn't before the transfer. Yes, he was. He was a graduate transfer. He was a graduate transfer. Joe Burrow completed his degree in three years and did what you had to do back then, which was pretend that the school you were at didn't have the <laughs> didn't have the. Uh, uh, master's program that you wanted and the other school did, and we all had to pretend that that's what was happening. And that you had to transfer for that reason and not because of playing time. And we all we all winked and nodded at each other because that's what was happening. But, you know, congrats to Joe Burrow because it worked out mm -hmm. for him. And I'm happy for him. I'm incredibly happy for Joe Burrow. So what's that's for, the sales pitch, so but it's also true. So what's next? What's next for Ohio State here then? Still need an what's... offensive tackle, in my opinion. Um, Proctor uh, does leave Alabama, but he just may he immediately goes home to Iowa, which is what we heard. That's what we heard. He missed he missed home. He had a rough year being thrown out there as a true freshman in the SEC. Um, and he, he just wanted to go home and I'm sure Ohio state tried their best to just be like, Hey, um, we've got corn too. Like we, we're, we're kind of like Iowa. We're almost as flat. Come on. Almost. <laughs> we're almost as flat and we've got corn. But he wanted to go home, so he went home. And I'm happy for him. Woody says Luke Montgomery will be a beast. He was never going Hopefully. anywhere else, Austin says. I agree. Um, I agree that Luke Montgomery will be a beast. I don't know if he's going to be a year. I don't know if he's going to be a beast in the year of our Lord 2024. If I did, I wouldn't be so concerned about getting an offensive tackle out of the portal, because if Luke Montgomery was reaching Luke Montgomery, all of his potential, if he was going to reach his potential in 2024, I'd be perfectly happy putting him at left tackle and Simmons at right tackle. And then, you know, we'll figure out the interior of the offensive line and then we go. I'd be happy with that. But I I don't know that Luke Montgomery is going to reach his final form in, mm -hmm. in 2024. And I don't know if anyone knows that. Um, yeah, Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien, I'm just saying, like, hey, maybe call up some. You you were at the you're the offensive coordinator at Alabama just a year ago. You you, you know some of those uh, you know some of those Bama offensive linemen probably probably got their number in your phone. Um, I'm just curious if maybe before you became the actual offensive coordinator. Uh, no, it's not. No, it's not, Austin. Because in my scenario, he did it before he became the offensive coordinator. If he just sent some feelers out. 
Just being like, hey, uh, if I were to go and be a coach somewhere, how you feeling in Alabama right now? You're right. It's impermissible contact. No, it's not because I, if in this scenario in which I'm Bill O'Brien, I'm not employed by Ohio State yet. It's not impermissible contact and it's not tampering. If I'm not employed by Ohio State yet, that's that's what my lawyer told me. And you got the best lawyer. I do. That's what my lawyer told me. If I'm not tied to an institution, I'm not tampering. Anything else, Jared? Anything else in the in the notes here, in the mailbag? Anything else you want to talk about here as we are coming up on the hour mark of our episode? Uh, I mean, you can check uh, Ask Sloopcast, see if there's anything in there you want to you want to snag. I can't I can't click around in Discord because it messes up the on screen chat. Jared Lawyer is on retainer paid in Sloop store merch. Uh, you're not wrong. Actually, the weird part is, is that my lawyer has me on retainer. <laughs> For a grand total of three dollars a month. Thirty two dollars a year. Patreon.thesloopcast.com. This was a while ago, but always be plugging with, Fle- with Parker Fleming gone. What is the percentage increase in odds for a kick return or punt return touchdown this year? Well, well we have to- drastically in- increased with Caleb Downs coming. <laughs> I, I mean, he'll be the only he'll be the only guy on the roster with a punt return touchdown. And that's just a fact. That is that is a fact. Them and if we're facts. talking, if we're talking specifically punt return. And that, that's what the question asked. Yes. A uh, kick or punt. Fair. We should be forcing with this defense next year, we should be forcing more punts more often. Which also just statistically increases the likelihood of there being a punt return touchdown. Uh, I can guess. I can guess, Austin, that he doesn't. Odds are probably, but there's no proof. I bet I could find proof. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that live on pod. Another another question here. Will portal tampering be part of the new college football game? Oh, my God. I hope so. Does it even (laughs) count as a football sim if you can't tamper? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. How many six, seven white boy tight ends do you know with punt return touchdowns on their resume, Austin? Is that profiling? Yes. Is it still accurate? Probably. (laughs) Uh, I think those are all the questions there, Jared. Those are all the questions for today. Those are all the questions, huh? Mm -hmm. (sighs) Mm-hmm. I I think this team is geared up for a national title. I'd, I'd feel so much more confident with getting that extra protection for, for whoever's going to be starting at quarterback. It's going to be Howard, right? It's going to be Howard, we'll right? We'll see. We might. We'll listen. See. Yeah. All, all in 2024. All, all in for 2024. Well, we're about 25 and 25. We're all in on 2024. Let's do this. All right. Does Ohio State rush for more than 2,500 yards? Asks Woody. We would say no. Um, that's totally doable. It is. It is. But I'm. I mean, look, look I'm, at your I'm two running that. backs. Look at your two running backs. They could do 1250 each. And that's not even counting Will Howard numbers. I mean, you get me that offensive tackle. Oh, I'd, 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 I'd put money on 2,500. Okay. Even without that, even without the, even without a, a an excellent offensive tackle, I'm still 
probably hitting yes on the twenty five hundred. I think it's totally plausible to get like two hundred out of Howard and then split the other between Henderson and Judkins. I, I think that's totally achievable. Um I, Austin, I'd I'd probably be more like eleven fifty or I'd rather be like 1200, 1200, 100, honestly. Or maybe Howard getting like 200 and that being the difference. Totally achievable. 100% achievable. Give me an offensive tackle, then buy me a national title t-shirt. I don't think anyone can touch us other than Georgia. I'm just going to say it. I don't think anyone can touch us other than Georgia. Still got to beat Georgia, though. That's the thing. Yep. Oregon. You got to win more good. games now. You got to win more games this this year now. Oregon will be good. And by the way, Oregon might beat us in the regular season. Go into Eugene still pretty early in the season. It's a very losable game. But. When the playoffs come to the playoffs, if we have to beat them again, we will. Or in the Big Ten championship game, if we have to beat them, then we will. But I, going to Eugene that early in the year it feels very losable to me, but I don't think it matters, honestly. I think you can lose that game and still do everything you need to do. In 2019, we were well over 3,000 yards rushing. Interesting. All right, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, I already mentioned the Patreon. Um, if you don't like those goofy ads that uh, Spreaker, a part our podcast service, places in the show you can avoid those uh for 32 dollars a month going to patreon.thesloopcast.com it also gives you premium access to the discord server you can watch and chat live which is only paid members get to do that in the discord server um so you can also do that um you get early access to episodes you get um premium access to our, in our discord server, which gives you access to like our recruiting channel, um, gives you access to a, a lot in the discord server. Although I will say the discord server is primarily free. It is primarily free. Uh, so anyone can join the discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I have a few things. Uh, our guys, basketball, get on the winning track here. Against Maybe. Penn State. Hey, you take the win with it with the you, you take a win in January. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you take a win in January. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh the women's women's basketball team upsets Iowa. Yep. How about that? Uh, you know, maybe Caden Proctor changes his mind. Mm -hmm. You know. I was going to go to Iowa. I was going to be near my family. I was going to be near my friends. But then I saw the women's basketball team get beat by Ohio State. And I was just like, ah, can I get that? Can I get that letter of intent back? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, a pair of basketball news here. I think Buckeyes play uh, at Nebraska this Tuesday, the 23rd. And then on the road again, up to Evanston to take on Northwestern. Both winnable games, by the way, but it, it's they have not done well on the road. It's been a very long time since they've won on the road in the Big Ten. We'll see how the new athletic director um, evaluates Holtman. Although the buyout's just too big, I think. And everyone just everyone thinks Ohio State has unlimited money. They don't. Because if you're really asking yourself, you want to pay 14 million to early terminate the to early terminate Holtman? 
ask yourself seriously. If you'd rather have Holtman gone now, or if you want to make sure to keep your offensive and defensive coordinator in place, because I'm, I don't know what Bill O'Brien's about to make, but I'm sure it's not cheap. If you want to make sure to keep Brian Hartline in place and Tim Walton in place, you want to make sure that all those football coordinators uh, aren't getting lured away to other jobs. And then start and because we're talking about like, oh, you know, we want to keep Walton. Maybe we have to throw him an extra two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Man, there's a whole lot of two hundred and fifty thousand dollar increments that go inside a fourteen million dollar buyout. So really ask yourself, do you want to buy out Holtman's contract? Last I looked, we're a football school. Unless, of course, you can convince a booster just to eat all that money all by themselves. Eh, yeah. You know, that's a, that's a different thing. But honestly, I don't think I don't know how many Ohio State basketball boosters care that much, to be honest. We're a football school. It sucks. I mean, it doesn't. But if you're specifically a basketball fan, it might suck. All right, Kyle. Um, is that it? You good? Yep, that we're good. We're, we are good. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music is brought to you by a Columbus-based band called Palette Knife. Um, I talked last week about a uh, of uh, talked about last week. We played of two minds that they were going to be playing um, Ace of Cups on Friday, January twenty sixth. Uh, also on that bill is Palette Knife. Also, by the way, on that bill is a band called uh, Manor Gates and. It's actually their album release show. So it's three uh, really cool Ohio Columbus based bands um, at Ace of Cups, January 26th, uh, which is this Friday. Uh, I think it's like $10 per ticket pre-order, $15 at the door. And if you're interested, uh, there there's a link in the show notes where you can go see Palette Knife, this band you're about to hear, and you can go see... Of Two Minds, which is the band we played last week. And then, of course, uh, the show is actually being headlined by Manor Gates. And you can look them up on your own if you're still interested. Or you can just go to the damn show. Support local bands. Support the Columbus music scene. Or don't. I'm not your dad. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Palette Knife. (laughs) 